So for everyone who doesn't know me, uh, my name's Andy. I'm one of the regional sales directors here at DocuWare, right here in the UK. Um, so I look after the uh, the north of the UK here. So I can see some of some friendly names on the uh, the list there. So some of you probably know me already. Uh, for anyone who doesn't, obviously great to meet you uh, virtually, um, and hopefully I'll get to meet you again uh, in person um, as well. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit today about information security, <clears throat> excuse me, and about how bringing information security into our systems is so vitally important. So just to set the scene before we kick off and just to give you a little bit of information on today's session, I've included my details there. So if anyone wants to reach out to me later, then please feel free to do so. Um, equally, if anyone has any questions, um, anything that they'd like to expand further on, then please do reach out to me. Today is designed to be quite lighthearted, um, quite kind of um, high level. So, uh, so maybe there might be elements that you want to dig into a little bit further. And of course, that's absolutely fine. Um, please do reach out to your regional sales directors. Equally, my details are there and I'm happy to, uh, to support you on that as well. On the right hand side of my screen as well, you'll be able to see just a couple of little pointers. Um, unfortunately today, I can't actually see anyone putting their hand up, um, which is uh, unfortunate. However, the chat window is available. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to push those into there. I am joined by my colleague, Nick, today, who's going to be keeping an eye on those questions. And uh, please don't worry if we don't answer those to the end. But uh, some of them may get answered along the way. Others, um, he'll wait to the end and he'll ask me um, at the end. And of course, we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions for you today. So today's agenda, well, we're going to cover off a couple of, of points. So the first one, of course, we'll go through those introductions to what it is we're talking about um, and why that might be, um, be important. And then we'll break down some of the information security principles. There are three main ones um, and we'll cover those off. Some of them hopefully will be quite obvious to some of the people on the call today. Some of them might be a little bit thought provoking, um, but of course, that's why we're here, I guess. So um, all good. We're going to look a little bit about why that's important. And then, of course, most importantly, from our side, how DocuWare is actually helping you um, with that subject and some of the things that we're going to be putting in place and supporting you with to make sure that your clients get the absolute best scenario out of their DocuWare solution. Like I say, today is quite high level, so I am going to be inviting questions um, towards the end there as well. So if you do have any as we go through, feel free to drop them in that chat window um, or equally there will be time left at the end, so feel free to uh, to go ahead and ask them then as well. So, okay, let's kick off. Well, what is information security? Well, I'm sure I could ask that question a hundred times and probably get a hundred different answers um, uh, as to what that actually means. Well, <coughs> excuse me, there are a couple of, uh, of kind of definitions and way of thinking about it, but essentially, Information security is, of course, the subject that covers the tools and the processes that, of course, we use as businesses to protect both our information and also our clients' information that we go ahead and support through for them as well. Examples of this might be things such as your policies, some of your settings, anything essentially that prevents unauthorized users from accessing information. That might be business. It might be personal, but of course, all that information is super, super important, not only from a, a I'll get my teeth back in from a legislative point of view, but also just about just doing the right things and just us as businesses wanting to be able to support our clients and our colleagues and our businesses themselves through their um, their information. Now, of course, the benefit of that not only is financial, but of course is reputational as well. If we're a company who unfortunately keeps uh, keeps slipping up and, and letting information go, then of course we're not necessarily gonna be well trusted and our relationships with our suppliers and our customers aren't necessarily gonna be that great. So it's about really managing that information to support our businesses and our clients in this ever-changing, ever-evolving information world. And hopefully, that makes a little bit of sense and makes that quite simple um, to think through. Now, this is broken down when we actually get underneath the bonnet of it and start to look at the actual details of information security. Well, it's broken down into three main areas. 
So the first one of those is confidentiality. Confidentiality sounds like a really simple subject, right? So it's basically the measures that we put in place that prevent unauthorized disclosure of information, confidential information. I guess we've all been thinking about this since the introduction of GDPR and probably significantly before that, about how we keep information confidential. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, of course, the purpose of keeping this information private is to ensure that only the right people have visibility of the information that they're likely to need. So firstly, if I own my information, then of course, it's right that I should be able to see it and I should be able to access it and I should be able to process it. But if someone doesn't own my details, then actually why? Why should they have access to it? Well, I guess the only real reason comes down to that one GDPR principle of having that legitimate interest, a legitimate reason to be able to process information that's relevant to either a person, a business, or essentially anything that could be considered confidential. Now, the second principle, which of course you can see on my, uh, my diagram at the bottom there, um, I've done that into a triangle to make it nice and simple for us all to be able to see today. But the second one, of course, is integrity. Well, what is integrity? What, why is that a principle? Well, I guess integrity is probably the most simple of them all. It's all about doing the right thing. Are we doing the right thing even when people aren't looking? No one can actually see what we're doing. Well, in DocuWare, of course, we take this really, really seriously. An example of that is, of course, the accreditations and the things that we, we challenge ourselves with and get ourselves audited on um, to ensure that, of course, not only are we looking after confidential information, but we're doing it with, with the right honour and the right integrity that, of course, our clients and our partners would absolutely demand of us. And rightly so, of course. Rightly so, of course. So what do we do? Well, of course, we protect your information. Um, we look against unauthorised changes, additions, deletions, any simple alterations of particular documents um, to ensure that nothing can be changed for any kind of illegitimate reason or something that sh doesn't show the right, um, the, the right level of integrity. Versioning of documents is probably now more prevalent than has ever been before, because of course the more digital um, organisations go, the more challenging it is to ensure that actually we're only ever using the right version of a particular document. Essentially, we're looking at the integrity of not only the people, the processes, but also those documents themselves to make sure everything is living up to the standards and the expectations that, of course, not only ourselves, but our clients absolutely expect of us. Finally, it's the availability. So, of course, we've protected that confidential information. We've stored it in those safe, secure and compliant locations. We've looked at that integrity and we've ensured that not only have we got permissions based access that, of course, um, means that our users can, uh, can act with integrity, even when actually they're, they're making a mistake. And we want to correct that and ensure that um, even unintentional lacks of integrity aren't, uh, aren't coming in. But equally, the integrity of the documents. And then, of course, once we've got them into this place, what happens now? Because we've still got to be able to access them. We've still got to be able to work with them. Otherwise, what's the point in having them in the first place, of course? So the first question that I have to ask myself when I start to think about availability is, should all information be available? Well, I guess that's a strange question. Should all information be available? Can't all systems actually just make information available? Isn't that kind of their job? Well, I think the problem that we found, especially during the pandemic, that, I mean, I promise I'm not going to go into COVID today, but uh, uh, during the pandemic, I think everybody found that issue in their businesses more than they'd ever done before, that actually they suddenly didn't have access to information. And actually it's started to raise those questions of, well, actually, let's just make everything available. But actually, if we make everything available, are we still tracking that confidentiality? Are we still acting with integrity? Can we actually make sure that our documents keep their own integrity and that doesn't get questioned or challenged? So actually, maybe not all systems can do this. 
And maybe DocuEd does actually step above the rest by being able to really make these things come to life. So how does DocuEd help? Well, I guess we can actually look at the availability and who needs access to these documents. Now, as many of you will already be aware, DocuEd isn't a one, one touch fits all. It's not a, a kind of ready-made suit, so to speak. So actually, not only can we give different availability and different permissions to different groups, different departments, we can also nail that down to different people within those departments, or maybe even further and start to look at the integrity and the availability of particular documents. So actually, maybe different people of the same level within different departments would even have different access to different documents. So of course, document has that true hierarchical structure where we can really dig down to those granular layers and just make sure that actually from a security and an information security point of view, we are going not only as far as we expect, but far further than an awful lot of other systems can actually achieve. But of course, the difference of availability should never be questioned. I still need to access my documents. I still need to access them in a way that is convenient for me on any device that I choose from any area or place on the planet, from any time, day or night. So these things really start to become complicated. Now again, that power of DocuAir to use that hierarchical structure and really dig in to actually making sure that we can control all those three pin principles in one foul swoop is super, super important. And for anyone who is new to DocuAir, please do look into that because of course it is a really simple subject, but one that is actually really, really valuable, not only to you as an organization, to your clients and for any salespeople on the call, it's a huge selling point when we're going into especially those, uh, those more compliance driven um, environments. So, okay, I've, I've chatted along a, a way to this for, for maybe 10, 15 minutes now, but kind of why, what, why is that important? What's the, the whole point and the, the importance of information security? Well, of course, I promised I wasn't gonna to go too far into to COVID and GDPR and, uh, and all that sort of stuff today. But of course we know about those, uh, those fines so that can have a, a true financial um, implication to, um, to organizations, some of which, and there are fines that I've, I know I've been reading about recently that um, are certainly large enough to close most businesses down. So of course we have that financial implication. We've got that bad publicity. I touched on this a little bit um, a little bit earlier um, today, but of course, if we start to get that bad publicity, that lack of reputation, suddenly it's hard to keep hold of our clients. It's hard to attract new clients, but not only clients. Actually, most of our businesses thrive because we bring in the best talent in the marketplace, and yeah, hopefully not too many of those resign, but certainly. If, uh, if we start to, to lose information, we start to lose our reputation in the marketplace and so on and so forth, we're likely to find it more difficult to attract the top talent in the marketplace and also maybe lose some of the ones that we have got. Now, of course, the, the worst case scenario there would be when all those things start to come together and, of course, the businesses start to close their doors. Very sad, but, um, but true fact of, of, of life. So, of course, we need to ensure that we're not on the wrong side of that. And of course, DocuAir bringing that true reflection of that information security into those, um, those areas is a real simple and key way um, of doing that. So how does DocuAir actually do this? Well, of course, I've talked a little bit about hierarchical structures, permissions, so on and so forth. But what does that actually mean? Well, what's actually happening in the back end? And of course, okay, we've built all our, our permissions, we've set all our structures up, we know what's going on with those, so on and so forth. But how does that actually break down? Well, at Document, we're really, really lucky because our, our techies, our, our developers, um, they've really got under the bonnet of doing an awful lot of research into this point and looking at how using that three-tiered architecture really supports our processes. And it breaks down our systems so that if people are trying to access things that actually they shouldn't, maybe we've all heard those horror stories of 
those hackers that uh, that are out in the world now and trying to cause problems then of course maybe that's something that um, that we can protect you from just by using our, our fantastic architecture of the products as well so how does that work well we've broken our architecture down into three set layers so these are what we call server architecture now of course um, just to to make sure that everyone's clear here when I talk about server architecture I'm not talking about physical servers absolutely not talking about physical boxes in any way shape or form what we are talking about is software servers of course so these may live on a single environment but they are completely separate software servers that are working um, hand in hand but separately all at the same time so what do these look like well we know we've got our front end our client application um, if you will that front end service a part of which the application where the logic is actually found so this is the logic of all our user information our, our, our kind of documents and so on and so forth and it's found in several services within the front end so even if you manage to, to gather your way straight to the front end of the service you've still only got a single part of the puzzle because not only have we got part of the logic here and only a single part of the logic we've also got it broken down into lots of different services that still make up the front end our second element is our back-end services now our back-end services is another part of the application logic so the logic has still been separated out into that second element so you've still only managed to find a part of that logic to be able to work with the system and again that's broken down further into several different services within the back end um, of the uh, the products as well so again even if you've managed to get through to the front end and the back end you've still not got all of the logic and all of the structure that's actually required to support your uh, your business needs finally we've got the infrastructure <coughs> oh, excuse me i've got a frog in my throat today so finally we've got our infrastructure our black element on the uh, the diagram there so again we've got several services that are built in with this common resource to make sure that we've got one or more um, of the central background services if you will so things like database storage our full text functionalities or message buses of course that we have built into that back-end service or that that infrastructure service um, to ensure that actually even if you've managed to get to any single point of that service you've still not got enough of, um, of the product to be able to do anything dangerous so even without doing any kind of permission setup or structuring or anything else we've still been able to bring everything into play and protect you as much as we possibly can from anyone trying to do anything that breaks that kind of confidentiality rule that integrity or of course that accessing that information that they shouldn't um, they shouldn't be accessing now the term server here of course is the key and like i say they are all software servers so again we're not talking about different different hardware services but they all come together to make that single service so bringing in that trio, triple lecture that tier architecture has been a real massive step forward not only for the docuet product but also the service and the solution that uh, we've been able to provide to our clients there today now i appreciate that um, information security is a massive subject and one that um, certainly i couldn't spend the whole afternoon talking about and i'm sure most of us um, i'd lose most of you if i did and um, so we've tried to make today quite high level um quite kind of bite size and hopefully we've we've managed to tick off um a few of those um kind of action points in, in people's minds to get them thinking about that um, however what i'd like to do is rather than go any further in i'd like to invite some questions from yourselves if you do want to go into any further information or any further depth about this type of subject then please reach out separately and of course happy to go into that but at this stage if i can bring nick into the call then um hopefully we can invite some questions from yourselves so nick are you uh, you there with me today hi andy thanks for that hi. super presentation as usual Thank you. um questions are coming through um slowly and surely uh, first one um how does DocuWare protect documents against criminal extortion software like ransomware and other malware? 
Yeah, good question. So um, I suppose touches on a lot of the things that we mentioned there. So um, of course, when we're trying to access that information, we have that structure in place to ensure that only the right people can actually access information where they should. So of course, we've got that permission driven access. And then again, breaking that down and ooh, what's going on here? Sorry, guys, got some kind of echo coming back at me there. Um, so I guess the, the next phase of that, of course, is that uh, that architecture. So even if a, a malware managed to get through, managed to try and access a part of the, um, the system or a part of the logic, of course, it would get itself knocked down and broken down because it, it still wouldn't be able to access what it needs. Cool. Thanks, Andy. A um, couple more now. Uh... Are documents encrypted as soon as they enter DocuWare? Uh, yeah, good question. So yes, they are. So um, our encryption engine works right at the, the front end. So we do also have um, firewall protection on the way into the system as well. So as, um, as documents are, are coming through um, our firewalls, they're all being um, virus checked and virus protected. And um, of course, anything that is raised as a threat would be, um, would be quarantined. And then, of course, you would be informed that, um, that that process has happened. Uh, where are the DocuWare data centers and who do you use? Uh, good question. So we use um, Microsoft Azure as our hosting platform. Um, the data centers are split into um, three main region, regions, um, that being uh, Europe, um, the Americas and the Far East. So here in the UK, um, our main data centers are within the European um, data centers. So they are primarily based in Dublin and they are backed off to Amsterdam. So replication in Amsterdam, main server um, there in Ireland. Super, thank you very much. Um... Uh, there are a couple more. I'm just trying to open it. <laughs> right, in the meantime, um, is there an overview of the different kinds of certifications for DocuWare? Uh, yep, certainly. So we, we do have a, um, a website um, with our certifications all listed on there. So um, if, if someone wants to reach out to me with that question afterwards, I'll happily ping you a copy of the, the link. Uh, where you can access all those certifications yourself, no problem at all. Um, which security algorithm does DocuWare use? Good question. Um, one that I don't know the answer to off the top of my head, I'd have to say. Um, however, we do have an architecture white paper that, again, I'd be happy to share with you. So um, please feel free to drop me an email um, after today's session, and I'll happily share that, um, that white paper with you. Um, someone has said this might be a silly question but if em employees are working from home are the security protocols you've spoken about today still kind of relevant they still happen in the background yeah absolutely so um the, the only uh, there's two elements to document so two things to be considered um when answering that so firstly if um, if you're a cloud customer then absolutely everything that i've mentioned today is um, is absolutely relevant and happening regardless of where you access the system, whether that be at home or in the office. Um, if you are an on-premise um, customer, however, then um, we would need to have a look at that in a little bit more detail to look at the infrastructure solutions that are in place at your office and how you're accessing data um, via your office. That could be things like, um, like VPNs and so on and so forth, but we just have to uh, probably get a little bit more granular on how you're accessing the office servers. But no, cloud solutions, doesn't matter where you access from, everything comes into the same place. Super, that's it. Cheers, Andy. Brilliant. Okay, guys, well, I think we've got a couple of minutes left. So um, I am two minutes early, so I'll hang around for another couple of minutes. But um, failing, uh, failing that, thank you very much for your time today, guys. Um, I appreciate today was very high level. So again, if anyone does have any questions or uh, wants to get into any more detail, please feel free to reach out. You've got your RSDs, of course, regionally or equally. Um, I did share my details at the beginning, so feel free to reach out directly to myself as well.
Oh, Andy, we have a few more questions actually. Okay, that's fine. We've still got one minute. Um, can DocuWare encrypt a specific field on a form? Encrypt a specific field on a form? Mm -hmm. Such as um, an SSN. Okay, I'm with you. So, um, so the whole form would be encrypted as it comes in. However, no, I don't believe we could encrypt a single field um, on its own or isolate that particular field. Um, however, quite an interesting one. Whoever that, whoever it was that asked me that, please do reach out to me afterwards because I would like to uh, understand a little bit more about the need there. Um, and I will look at that just in case I've, I've got that wrong. But my understanding is no, we would encrypt the entire form, but not a specific field. Uh, thank you. And can the can the, I'm not sure what part of the presentation this was related to, but it says can the location be transferred to another region like Asia? Uh, I'm guessing we're talking data about lo data location, location. Data location. Um, so it, it would depend on on um, regional requirements and regional legislation. So um, of course, if you're a, a, a European business based here in the European Union, then um, obviously we wouldn't advise that because of gdpr regulations however no of course if um if you're a client in in kind of the uh, the asian network then absolutely we we can host your service in the asian data centers no problem okay i think that's it wonderful well, I think we have come to the end of our time together today guys so um again thank you very much for your your time and attention today really appreciate that and uh, as i say if uh, i appreciate today was quite high level so any further questions anything that anyone would like to go into in more detail please reach out to your either local rsds or equal out to myself as well um everyone will be very happy to help you in uh, in any way we can but guys thank you very much for your time today and i wish you a pleasant weekend take care